it's me, Kia. And girl, let me tell you all about me getting surgery. Kia's going. Ah! Cats out the bag. Yes, I'm getting plastic surgery and I am so excited. First of all, I have been wanting to get my boobs done. Can I say boobs? Tits? Tatas? Breasts? Tits? Look, I'm gonna say boobs, and if you don't like it, I'm sorry. But anyways, I have been wanting to get my boobs done for like ever, since before I had any kids. Aww. Growing up, I was a proud member of the Itty Bitty Titty Committee, reporting for duty. And then when I had my son, they obviously got a little bit bigger. And then when I had my daughter, them things were thinging. But after I stopped breastfeeding, I noticed that they kind of lost their elasticity. They weren't as perky, kind of lost their volume. I mean, you gotta think when you're breastfeeding, you know, obviously your boobs are full of milk, so they're gonna be a little bit more round, a little bit more perkier. And then when you stop breastfeeding, obviously the milk dries up, they kind of lose that volume. So all the milk leaves, but the stretchy boobs stays. So as you can imagine, it leaves your boobs looking kind of uh, deflated. So I have my breast augmentation coming up and I want to share with you all some tips and questions that I asked during my consult. So my first tip is to do your research. This is obvious, right? You're getting your breasts done, do your research. And I don't mean, you know, go on Google and click on the first doctor you see. So there's this website called realself.com. I'll be sure to link it down below because it is a very, very reliable and helpful resource for when you wanna do some research on a plastic surgeon. It's pretty much like a Facebook profile, but for doctors. It's gonna show you photos, it's gonna show you reviews, it's gonna show you, um, you know, all their credentials if they're board certified, which is very important. You wanna make sure that the doctor you're going with is board certified. Um, so it's pretty much to show you everything about that particular doctor along with links to their website so definitely you know check out realself.com another helpful platform is social media so a lot of times there are facebook groups on facebook that are specific to your area so if you want to get plastic surgery done here in San Antonio, you can just search San Antonio Plastic Surgery and there's likely a group. Instagram is also really helpful when it comes to doing research, um, mainly because you can, you know, hashtag San Antonio Plastic Surgeon. It's gonna show you all the different surgeons or all the different people who have used that hashtag. So definitely take advantage of social media look on realself.com and just kind of do your own research, whether that's Googling the doctor or talking word of mouth to people who have had the surgery. Knowledge is power. I specifically wanted my surgery here in San Antonio, mainly due to convenience. I didn't really want to travel personally, but I know plenty of people who travel to the DR, travel to Mexico, travel to Miami. Um, I just like the convenience of being home, especially with me having two little kids. I didn't want to have to travel. Aww. Typically, if you have your surgery where you live locally, you're gonna be paying significantly more than those typical surgery cities. Um, so definitely, you know, keep that in mind when it comes to selecting a doctor or a place where you're gonna get your surgery done. My second tip would be to make sure you have an idea of the questions you wanna ask before the consult. There's nothing worse than thinking of all these questions after the consult and having to call back to get clarification. No! I literally was finding myself thinking of all these different questions when I got home. So I would recommend writing them out in advance. That way, when you're at the console and the doctor asks, what questions do you have for me? Bum, bum, bum. Pull out that list. Speaking of questions, here are a couple of questions that I asked during my consult. So this question is important because there are some surgeons who only use saline and some surgeons who only use silicone. Both are FDA approved, but there are some differences between the two. I personally think that silicone feels the most natural.
However, my doctor highly recommended that I do saline implants just for safety precautions in event something ruptures, God forbid. So I'm gonna be going with the saline implants. I know plenty of people who have had silicone, haven't had any issues. So I would say just do your own research and kind of make a decision that you feel the most comfortable with. So this question was important to me because I didn't want any visible scarring. And neither did my husband. That was the one caveat he had to this whole breast augmentation. He doesn't want to see any scars. So I was like, bet. So for me, it was important that I found a surgeon that went through the armpit. So a lot of doctors do the, um, you know, around the areola or under the crease. Those are very popular incision sites. So I specifically was looking for a doctor who specialized in the armpit method. And you'll be surprised, a lot of doctors don't perform that way. It really does take a special skill set. A lot of people didn't even know that was an option, but yes, that's an option and that's the incision site that I'm going with. God forbid you find yourself in a situation where you have to have revision surgery, it's important to be familiar with their revision policy. That way there aren't any surprises. So I asked this question just to kind of get a feel for what to expect before and after the surgery. I can be a little, um, type A, but I just like to make sure that I'm like mentally, emotionally, physically prepared, okay? I'm working on it. So before your surgery, you have what's called a pre-op or pre-operation. And that's typically where you get your blood work done, you know, you get any um, x-rays, they do any lab tests. Just make sure that everything is good. Pregnancy tests. Oh, hell no. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine going in for surgery and finding out you're pregnant? We're about to fight. Uh-uh, we're going to fight at that point. Anyways, so you're getting your blood test done. You're getting your pregnancy test done, x-rays. That's typically when your payment is due for your surgery. So you're making your payments. And they're just giving you everything you need to know about the surgery. You know, they'll tell you what you need to avoid. Um, during my pre-op, I'll make sure to record what I can. That way you guys kind of have an idea of what to expect during the pre-op. So stay tuned for that. When I asked about aftercare, the doc advised me to just wait until the pre-op appointment because I had the consult back in November timeframe. So he's like, you're gonna forget anyway. Touche. So this question is important because depending on how much your surgery is, you may have to notify your bank. That way they let you spend that cash. I know a lot of banks will have like a withdrawal limit or you know they'll flag your account if you make a large purchase. They may freeze it, they may put it on hold. Don't nobody got time for that, okay? That's so annoying. So being aware of the form of payment in advance is important for planning purposes. So obviously this question is very important because you need to know what your budget looking like. Can I even afford this surgery? So after the consult, you'll typically sit with the financial coordinator and she'll run through all the numbers with you. To get on the schedule for surgery, you usually have to put a certain amount of money down and that can be like either 10% of the surgery or like a flat fee of $200. And usually that down payment gets applied to the grand total. So depending on where you go, you'll likely end up spending about four to $8,000 for breast augmentation. I'm personally spending about, ooh, I can't even say it. $13,500, but that's only because I'm getting lipo as well. Wow, so you just gonna slide that in there. <laughs> yes, I added lipo 360 to my surgery just because I figured, you know, I'm already under the knife. You might as well just go ahead and suck all that fat out. Go on. <laughs> Go and suck me out, okay? I'm already under the knife anyway. And I already know what you're probably thinking. You don't need lipo. Listen, okay, I have stubborn fat around my C-section incision. And even when I went for my consult, he's like, look, I can tell you work out sis, but that area is really tough. And I was like, I know, help me. So yeah, I added LiPo360. So LiPo360 is all of this front area, the sides, and then all of your back. 
but without the lipo, I would have been at about 7K. So it sounds like a silly question to ask, but I feel like having a realistic expectation of what the pain is like can kind of help you get mentally prepared. After talking to the doctor and some friends who have had the surgery, they kind of told me that it just feels like a really intense chest workout. So this question is important to kind of help you figure out your budget and kind of give you a realistic expectation of what the surgery day will look like, how recovery will look like, because usually you don't get to stay overnight. I personally prefer the convenience of everything just happening in one central location. Thankfully, the doctor that I went with has a surgical center on site. So during your consult, they'll likely tell you to wear a bra that isn't padded. Kind of like one of those bralettes that don't support anything. But they tell you to wear that so they can size you easier. They usually will input different size implants to kind of simulate what it would look like at that given size. Now keep in mind, you know, breast augmentation is going to give you that volume, but a breast lift is going to bring them higher. So keep that in mind when it comes to trying to figure out what surgery you want to get. Um, for me, I'm just going with the breast augmentation. I was kind of torn between either a breast lift or breast augmentation or both. But I think what helped me make my decision was really just kind of seeing those photos of women who got a breast augmentation without the lift and it was fine. But definitely, you know, take into consideration how much sagging you have um, because sometimes a breast lift may be all you need. Anyways, back to the sizing. So they input the implants to kind of give you a feel of what size looks good for your body type. And the sizing is kind of annoying because they size based on cc's or cubic centimeters, I wanna say. It just measures the volume, right? They go from 100 cc's to 800 cc's. And it's gonna be based on obviously, you know, your desired volume that you want, um, your body type, and the doctor will kind of help you identify that, you know. You also have to consider how much skin tissue you have around your natural breast. Um, but the doctor is very knowledgeable and will kind of help you get a feel for what looks best for you. I'm personally going with 450 cc. Also, when you're looking at before pictures, try to look at women who have breasts that look like yours. That way you're kind of getting a realistic end result. So yeah, you may see someone who had a really great after effect, but that's not realistic to what you're gonna look like because you started out with more breasts than she did or vice versa. Does that make sense? So back to my tips. My third and final tip is to go to more than one consult and don't put any money down until you are confident in your choice. Remember, you are the customer. You wanna make sure you're going with a doctor that you feel comfortable with, that seems knowledgeable, and kind of gives you a warm and fuzzy. So one thing I will say about my doctor, um, he's not very friendly, uh, but he knows his stuff, and that's important to me. Like. You're my surgeon, I don't need you to be my bestie. I need you to know the facts. I need you to come at me with real information. Help me make an informed decision. So that's what he did. I know I read a lot of reviews that kind of said he was kind of rude, he was um, too cutthroat. I like that type of stuff. I need you to keep it real with me. When I went to my first consult, y'all, I think I was just so excited and so overwhelmed with joy. I was like, bet, this the doctor. I put $2,000 down to get the surgery scheduled. Idiot. And then when I went to my second console, I realized that I liked that doctor better. He seemed more knowledgeable and was able to give me more of the desired look that I was going for. So um, yeah, that call back was really awkward. Hey, um, so how many more money back? So the doctor I ended up going with was Dr. Gary Lawton here in San Antonio. So I am super excited. I just pulled up to the doctor's office. I'm here for my consult. I'm super excited. Like y'all, I made this appointment like two months ago. I've literally been waiting for two months to be seen. They're like super backed up here in San Antonio. I guess the demand is really high. Um, so I'm here 
I'm about 15 minutes early. I'm always getting lost, so I had to give myself some time to like get lost and deal with traffic. So I figured I go and try to find out exactly where the office is located because it's in like this big building and it's a particular suite that I have to go to. So I'm getting ready to head out, try to figure it out, and then um, I'll get back on when I can. I'm the type of person when it comes to stuff like this, I am judging everything, okay? I need the facility to be clean. I need the bathrooms to be clean, okay? I need the building to be nice. I need your front staff to be welcoming and friendly. I need y'all to have clear directions. Like all that will factor into if I go with you or not. Thankfully, I didn't have any of those issues with his office. So when you check in for your consult, expect to fill out a lot of paperwork. Um, fortunately, I got there a little bit early, so I was able to fill out all the 10,000 pieces of paperwork they had us fill out. I mean, I get why they're asking for it, but it's, it's still kind of annoying and time consuming. So yeah, expect to fill out a lot of paperwork and expect to wait around a lot. So my consult, both consults were about an hour and a half and I spent majority of that time kind of just waiting. But nevertheless, I have my pre-op coming up and then my surgery is scheduled for the first week of March and I am so excited. I will try to keep you guys updated and posted on how everything is going and kind of take you guys along with me on this journey. I will try my hardest to keep up with my weekly uploads. As you guys know, I try to post every Saturday at 10 o'clock, but if I can't keep up, just know that I am healing and I am recovering and I love you guys and thank you for your support. If you guys enjoyed this combo, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching and I will call you later. Toodles. Subscribe.